Hi, and welcome to Schmooze with Suze. I'm Suze Montgomery. I've uh, been doing this for a long time, probably close to 40 years, so I think we have it down. But tonight we have a topic that probably, if you live in the city of Ventura, you were affected by, and I'm talking about the Thomas Fire, which really the origin was in Santa Paula. And from what I hear, the wind was blowing at a mile a minute with the flames, and all three of my guests were impacted by this tremendously and losing of homes, uh, potentially losing home, and now with water bills that don't make sense. So let's talk about this. I've got Christine Weber and her husband Nate and also Rick Ray on the couch. You guys lost your house. Sure did. You did. Yeah. Well, how did you know the fire was coming? Um, actually, our neighbor, uh, Mike and Rebecca, just next to us, they, he had texted me because he had the 5 scanner app, and he's not a dramatic person by any means, and he told me I need to turn my car around and that the fire was heading towards Ventura, and it would be here in about two hours. And we get a lot of fire warnings because we're up on the Ventura Hillside. Oh, so you're, you do get them. Oh, we never get excited because, oh, there's going to be a fire. And we kind of think, oh, whatever, it, it'll be fine. But when Mike texted me, I need to turn my car around because it was coming so quickly, then I knew something was different. And our patio furniture in the backyard. Usually when there's heavy winds, it sort of vibrates across the patio, and it was just smacking the side of the patio. So it definitely felt like a different night. And it just was... Were you home? Were you... Yeah, so, I mean, from my perspective, I, she was very prepared. And I was, um, I'd been on call the night before, so I was pretty tired, so... Nate's a physician. I, I, I thought, honey, come on, it's gonna be okay. Nothing's gonna happen. We've been there for six years and we've gone through a couple you know, nothing like this, but a couple scares where people told us to be prepared um, and nothing happened. And um, so I was kind of telling her, like, let's go to bed. It's going to be okay. And um, eventually we realized as the flames were encroaching around our house from below and above, um, and the calls became a little more frequent from not only our neighbor, but uh, one of another neighbor who's uh, two houses down. He's a firefighter, as well as about another neighbor who's about two blocks down. He's a firefighter, and they both texted and said, "Hey, you know, you should, you guys should probably leave." It um, was coming down from below, and and the whole deck in the back was lit up like daytime. Yeah. So you could tell it was close. And then he didn't really get excited until I said, honey, I think we need to go. Just pack up and go. And he kind of took a look out there. And then when I saw the actual flames behind our house, then he said, oh my gosh, we need to go now. And so we got the kids and put them in the cars. And well, you were somewhat ready. I, did, I packed because I was so nervous. And it just felt like a funny night. And I just, there were things that I didn't want to leave without, like their baby books and mommy stuff. Yeah, how old are the kids? They're small, aren't they? Two and four. Wow. Yeah. They're little. frightened? We tried not to make it tra traumatic for them, and so we waited until the cars were packed up and everything was ready, and then we woke them up and we said, we're going to Grandma's to have a sleepover, and that was it, because we wow. didn't really know what was going to happen. Yeah. They were. They thought it was fun. You know? They did. They, they didn't, thought they it was didn't fun. know what was going on. So. Two and four, you really don't get it. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. 
Rick, you're neighbors, right? Yes. Yeah, we live just a couple doors mm -hmm. down from Nate and Christine. They're wonderful neighbors, and we're so sad at the loss of their home. We just the whole neighborhood is devastated by it, and here to support you Thank in you. your comeback. Yeah. We, we had a little bit of a different experience because my wife works for NASA. She was napping on the couch when I was flicking through the TV channels and I saw this fire breaking out in Santa Paula and blowing towards us rather rapidly. I woke her up and she immediately got on her weather app. She's super technical this way and she could see that the arrows, the wind arrows, were heading literally directly towards Ventura neighborhoods and specifically right towards ours. Mm. So she said, you know what? Let's just pack up, let's just get things together that we might want to get out of here with. And um, if it turns out it's not an emergency, then we just had a bit, bit of good exercise. Mm -hmm. And it's a good thing we did, because I packed up my entire film business, our office, a lot of valuables, mm. got our dog and cat who were indoors, and uh, got them all loaded and ready to go. And then the lights were out, and after that, it, it got real, uh, real hairy and scary after that. Yeah. As you mentioned, the fire coming up over the hillside was really a wake-up call. It was traveling at, traveling at the rate of an acre per second. That's amazing. So to see that glow over the hill and then to see the fire and the advanced flames were jumping the canyon ahead so we could see across our canyon already over at the ranch we could mm -hmm. see fires breaking out over there. And we're at the top of the hill so you don't want to get stuck up there right. behind all the cars because if a lot of people are trying to evacuate at once right. we're at the very top of the hill. Dead end. And we it, that would be very bad. Yeah. yeah. So we wanted to be ahead of the game. Yeah. If we're going to evacuate, we wanted to get out sooner than later. <clears throat> yeah, the evacuation part was, we're on the west side, so we mm -hmm. were evacuating. With, <laughs> I got the uh, VC alert on my phone. Mm -hmm. My husband did not. Mm -hmm. And subsequent to this, I've also heard that many people did not get the alerts. Mm -hmm and found out a lot of information that probably she'll be coming out pretty soon about stuff that happened or should have happened that did yeah. not. I guess we did not have an emergency plan in the city of Ventura from what I understand from all my careful questioning. And when, you know, we had very little time to get ready, got the cat and shoved the cat in the box, carried mm -hmm. the cat out and got the dog. We yeah. headed down to the shelter down at the fairgrounds, which was, mm -hmm chaos yeah there was no one in charge oh. it was the the city no city presence the county was the oes office yes. of emergency services but they were not really organizing and then the salvation army did not really do much organizing and the red cross were not really organizing so i walked in there you know I'm this busybody. Okay, who's in charge? Yeah. Nobody nobody everybody <laughs> did hand. one of these things, right? No. Here's a blanket. And I just looked at John and I'm like, this is chaos. Mm -hmm. And then I saw a bus pull up with some of my seniors from one of the retirement homes where I teach and I gave mm -hmm. John my purse and I said, I'm gonna go get my babies. I got yeah. my babies. Mm -hmm. Take the purse, go you know, go and I'll call you, I'll keep my phone on. Yeah. And then uh, it was after that we just decided, you know, when they dumped out Vista Del Mar in there, and then they had a lot of homeless that came in, and then since it was chaos and no one was in charge, it I decided I was sleeping in the car, so we slept in the cars yeah. in the oh, lot at wow. the fairgrounds. Mm. Oh man! Next morning, got up, went in, nobody in charge again. I had my little wind-up radio from, you mm. know, from Radio Shack with my batteries. Mm. I brought that with me, and all we could pull in was KNX from LA, and they had the Bel Air fire. Um, so I think this taught us lessons, but uh, there's also things that probably there was a lot of balls dropped. That's the way I looked at it. So well, I never got a text or you anything. Got nothing. No, oh. and I thought I was signed up on the app, yeah. but maybe I did it incorrectly. I don't know, but it was a real wake-up call because we the electricity went out. So you cannot just turn on the news. And then I kept googling. Thomas Fire, local updates, anything, yeah. anything, fire, winds, and everything is several hours, you know, out of date. Mm -hmm. And so if it was True. not for my neighbor, he, I mean, I wouldn't have heard the baby monitor. Yeah. I would not have heard anything. He probably saved all of our lives, Mike, because yeah. he texted me and I wouldn't have known. I would have just gone to bed. It was later at night and no one, we'd have just woken up to flames. Yeah. I mean... So I can't even, you know, I think to I have only two people die, 
a firefighter really and some strange thing. Mm -hmm. That was pretty amazing. amazing. Oh, people yeah. on our street, well, we have three firefighters in this little area and one um, couple from our church, they, they left because he's a firefighter, but then he felt bad and went back and honked the horn up and down the street because we wow. have a lot of, oh. not a lot of it. On good Mint? Amount. I didn't hear that. Down Did the you hear hill that? a little bit. He made it up Mint, but he was, I think he was on Artemisia. Over. And, so and I think so, in these little neighborhoods like where we live, there's we all know each other. Yeah, we have sure. a Christmas party Close. together. Yeah. We have a summer street block party together. Yeah. Everyone's really connected. I, I, yeah. I, we know almost every family yeah. in our neighborhood personally. And that allowed us to network with each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went over to a neighbor's house that was you know, quiet, and I thought they might still be asleep, and we were really pounding on their door, um, just to be sure, mm -hmm. you know, to take care that everyone in the neighborhood was accounted for. And fortunately, they'd left a small note on their door that said, we've left, okay. which was very, well, a very good thing. Yeah. But uh, we did not rely on uh, civil authorities to help us in this situation. I don't yeah. remember my phone ever going off, the police or fire. They were so overwhelmed by the speed of this tragedy. Mm -hmm. um, a well, lot of they were probably way under prepared. I mean, they were I'm at the sure. east end of town. And the and worst was happening out there before correct. us. Correct. And then it moved so fast, they had no chance to catch up. And d you had sprinklers on your roof, yes. right? So, were they effective? Uh, I think they probably helped. They certainly didn't hurt. Uh, I'm one of the few people, I think, in Ventura that has installed a sprinkler system on my roof. I did that because years ago, during the tea fire in Santa Barbara, right. I saw an article of a man whose house was standing amongst, amongst 20 houses that were rubble, and he said his house was no different from anyone else's except he'd put a sprinkler system on his roof. So when I moved in, I got some basic PVC pipe, hooked it up to my lawn uh, watering system, a little valve that cost me about $600 in labor and parts, and I wired rainbirds across the top of my home. No kidding. Why is this the first time I'm hearing about it? <laughs> <laughs> well, you should know about it because I told everyone in the neighborhood to come by and turn it on if I wasn't there. Uh, yeah. But yeah. I recommend, and I believe firmly, that Ventura should take a hard look at this. During Australia's fires, the big fires that killed so many back in 2009, as those communities rebuilt, the Australian government required that rooftop sprinkler systems be installed on all new houses. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just, does it hurt? Certainly not. It, does it help? I think. Fire follows the path of least resistance. And if there's a big wet house dripping with water, it's going to go around that. Mm -hmm. um, now, but you ran out of water. Weren't you trying to fight the fire with your garden hose yes. or something? Yes. So my wife and I left and went down just as you did and many other people did, and we watched the fire from down below. But then we heard a couple of neighbors had gone back up into the neighborhood to see what was happening, because you really couldn't tell whose houses were burning and whose weren't. Okay. It was easy to mistake it. Mm -hmm. And they texted us from up on the hill, and they said, there's basically no one up here. Nate and Christine's house was already on fire. There was hardly any police or fire up there. And they said, if you want to get up here, your sprinkler system is working but we're alone up here and we could use the help. They didn't ask me to help, they just kind of indicated that they were fighting fires with garden hoses. And so as soon as I heard that, I thought, I'm going back. I wouldn't have gone back on my own without these kind of brave neighbors sort of spurring yeah. it on. But once I got up there in the neighborhood, your house was fully engulfed and other houses down in the canyon and the sparks were unbelievable. Flying through, landing on porches, starting, you know, porch furniture on fire and some of the vegetation in the area. And if we weren't fighting that, a group of us, about six of us, with garden hoses, we, that fire would have burned our entire region. But then about 2.30 in the morning, we were really successful and we had a fire truck arrive and was helping out. Just like that, all water shut off. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like the pressure went down. It was like someone just turned off an electrical switch. The water just went off for the firefighters as well as our, what I'd call our garden hose crew. And uh, at that point, things got scary because the, there was plenty of fire around us, plenty of danger, and we had no tools to fight it. What are the firefighters just standing there watching this happen? Well, they were doing what they could. They were very frustrated though, and we could hear on their radio that other firefighters all across the hills had also lost water at different times during the evening as I stayed there with them. So the water, what we don't realize is we have these 250,000 gallon tanks on the hill 
but they are fed through a pumping system from the lowlands, which is electrically based. So when electricity goes out in our city, they're useless. Basically, those tanks don't refill, they simply drain. And what we did, and I suppose all the neighbor neighborhoods did, was to drain those tanks. In order to regenerate the power to those tanks requires, from what I understand, three individuals with pickup trucks and generators on the back who have to drive up to some location and manually hook up a generator to power the pump. Mm -hmm. So that's completely inefficient and ineffective. And if we have another tragedy of any kind like this where the electricity goes out, a very basic thing that happens, um, we could face a complete water shortage, depletion. Well, so I'm thinking that we need to do something to, if we have an emergency plan, which I don't know if we do or not, I'm thinking if we did, it was woefully insufficient and it didn't work and then the water is situation, this is going to be an issue. The city's going to have to address this and remediate this. This, I mean, God knows what's going to come next. I mean, we're due for an earthquake, right? Or a tsunami. or We're any, due for yeah. something. So we need a really well-crafted emergency plan with all the basic services involved in it. It doesn't sound like we have one. I would say that part of the problem that we have now in the city is that we're facing a massive lawsuit over the loss of water. And as a result, what we found, what I found is that my questions go unanswered. This is actually the opposite of a good plan. No one wants to speak up because of course they could be held liable for what they say. So the city is under a bit of a gag order to not speak about this loss of water or any other problems that might have gone wrong that could be used against them in a court of law. This doesn't help the general public at all. I can understand why they're doing it this way, but it's almost like backing away and hiding from an issue that is so urgently in need of being addressed. Well, it needs to be transparent for everyone to understand. If we have an emergency plan, where is it? How does it work? What's the evacuation? Where do you go? I mean, there is no transparency on that note. So there's, and the communication is not there. So there's, there will be lawsuits. I mean, Santa Rosa, when they went through this, Santa Rosa figured it out, but it took them a while, but they had a tremendous amount of lost lives. I think it was something like 44 or 45. Mm -hmm. But they figured out what to do because they really didn't understand it. They never went through that also, but they got it. So I would suggest that whoever the powers that be at City Hall pay attention to what happened in Santa Rosa and tune into that, at least have some kind of dialogue with those people to figure it out. It would be a good this idea. Is, this mm -hmm. is going to be, I don't know if the city, I went to a meeting last night with the city, and they did say that they had some kind of insurance. There is some kind of guarantee on the insurance, but how far does that go? We don't know. Again, I'd like to, I want answers. I'm like you. I didn't lose anything outside of smoke damage and, you know, the house with the, we couldn't breathe and whatever. We didn't lose actual property. But we could have. I mean, it was it raced all the way down to the bottom of the hill where we live. So it was, and you, you have to go through all this oh. time-consuming oh, yeah. reconstruction of oh, yeah. events. Do yeah. you have nightmares? I mean, no. you know? We just, I think the reality of how much work it is gonna be is finally setting in. Staggering. It's crazy. I mean, even the decision on the debris removal took hours because your insurance, Paul, everyone's insurance is different and you go down to the government center and they want signatures so they can get funding, but they don't really know everyone's policy. And so, for example, in our situation, it would have been a, not a good idea. For most people, it probably would. It is a good idea to opt in, but we have so many caissons and it was just very complicated. And so no one has any information for us. I just have to go, he works so much, I'm just trying to figure it out on my own. Wade your way through all this I'm mess. wading my way through this and mess. And how do you know where to go? You, there's oh no my gosh. blueprint. You go to one place and then it just opens Pandora's know. box up. Oh, no people, they, I mean, everyone's so green. They don't know what's going on. They can give you information and then they give you the name of someone else who has more information. and. So we're just trying our best and trying yeah. not to get overwhelmed with it because we know it's a long process. It's going to be at least a year, a year and a half, and we don't even have our debris removal 
started, although we have our architects and our contractor. And fortunately for us, my dad owned a homeowner's insurance company for over 30 years, and so he's been guiding us. But for people who don't have that, I feel so bad for them, because the day of the fire, he said, call your insurance. And I think a lot of people won't have even thought of that. And then the next thing he said, okay, you fired your claim, get a rental that's furnished. And so we just thought, how would we ever know to even do and that? And how do you know where to find a rental that's furnished? No, oh there's my no gosh, there's nothing rentals. to rent in Ventura anyway. Yeah, so it was just this whole process. And then once you get to the next step, then you realize how much the other steps are coming. And it's just hard because when you go through insurance, it's not like you're just paying out of pocket and you can just pick your tile out whenever. And so we're just trying to stay positive. I keep looking at my pictures on Pinterest, like my house is gonna look like this. <laughs> it's gonna be amazing. Cause otherwise you would just get so overwhelmed. Well, you'd be at the bottom of the well. The bo you just would just the throw out. in the towel because it's, it's like a part-time job. It's so it, much work. I can imagine. It's crazy. It yeah, and all these decisions, even just picking the appliances. I'm mm -hmm. like, but you know what's difficult is that there's no roadmap to there's how no to do map. this. But thank mm -hmm. God your dad jumped in. But then again, you know, even with there's him. race, because uh, I heard about <laughs> tremendous resources. I mean, I was on Facebook, uh, mm -hmm. just you know, resourcing like mm -hmm. constantly. Yeah. Uh, the in fact, I was at mm -hmm. Flynn's office. I was oh. driving away from the surgery, <laughs> and I yeah. was a st an hour out of surgery. Oh. I was resourcing. Oh wow. I was still uh, because I felt like I felt like I had to do something and help, mm -hmm. but I didn't know. I felt so impotent. I mm -hmm. didn't know what to do. And I think a lot of people did. They put yeah. together something up at, uh, what was it, up at Poinsettia Pavilion. Yeah. Did yes. you access that at all? Yes. We started there, and it yeah. was pretty helpful because mm -hmm. they had a really, that was actually very well organized. Okay. You walk in, you sign in, they get your information, and then you they have three rows, and they have everyone from insurance to, and that, that was so helpful because you just go to a little station, and they don't charge you. They expedite over, um, I think, 24 hour, 48 hour, your birth nice. certificate, your every, all your documents. They just want to know where you were born and your name, no questions asked. And most of the community has been so supportive. Target, I emailed Target, I lost a Christmas present of photo gifts and I couldn't figure out how to reorder it. It was my, my dad's like mug with the uh, pictures and they just sent it for free. You know, you just, so many wow. people have been you know, supportive. Yeah. Fox Jeweler, they gave away free necklaces and you know, the community has been so supportive and that definitely offsets all this stress and the confusion from the other side. So that, that helps. I mean, and yeah, the, I mean, the details and the technical aspects of, of rebuilding um, are overwhelming. And, and, and as you said, the, the, the plan that's going to need to develop for the future of any future disaster definitely needs to be there. Uh, but I got to say, the support from the community, the support from our neighbors. The church, friends. More, more overwhelming than, than, yeah. than losing our home. It was I mean, it's amazing. We were blown Very away. Very supported. This, it, this, uh, this, you know, it, there's down, you know, the pitfalls, but also the other side, which yeah. is this town is amazing, amazing in the way it cares for each yeah. other. Yeah. There's amazing. so many genuinely good people in this town that yes. will help. Yes. They don't even need to be asked. Yeah. I mean, they'll just step up and help. Yeah. But yes. that, I love that about this yeah. town. But I get frustrated by the bureaucracy of, sure. of the other stuff right. because. I'm sitting there thinking, tax dollars, I'm paying for this, and what am I getting, okay? Yeah. Or yeah. how does this work? Or just talk to me, tell me, <laughs> you know, sh help me figure yeah. this out. Yeah. It's difficult. Yeah. One thing that was very unfortunate, in my opinion, was that uh, Ventura Water went ahead and sent out bills to its customers this month. Uh, many people had lost their homes. Many people had used water to fight the fires. And the bills were widely divergent and very strange. What? So people began to report on Nextdoor, kind of the community uh, sourcing mm -hmm. website, that they were getting these bizarre bills, even though their houses had burned down or were closed. That's um, in some cases, I mean, it's just uh, uh, you know anecdotal what we're hearing, but in some cases, bills up to ten times what their normal water bill is. Now, for a utility that 
let us down on some level by having a very antiquated system that, that eventually ran out of water, you think someone would have just kind of thought this through. They would have said, maybe we ought to take a look at these bills before we send them out to people whose homes have just burned. Well, we've always been a, a reactive town when it comes to something like this kind of bureaucracy. It's never been proactive. It, you know, we have an opportunity coming up in 218, and not only nationally with midterms, but we have a, elections coming up in districting within the city of Ventura. I started the conversation with districting eight years ago saying, hey, we're in violation of the 2001 Voters Act. Why don't we get on board with this? Because there's an attorney firm that's going up and down the swath of California suing all these non-compliant towns, and we're going to be one of those if we don't get on board. Well, what happens? We get sued, of course, what a surprise. And that was back in October. We had 90 days to get compliance. So now we're going to be districting. Gee whiz, what a thought. Yeah. But I think again, by being, you know, looking at the local elections here in the city of Ventura, because all in politics are local, we need to really look at people that will be running or find people that we can have confidence in that will make decisions with our tax dollars and be more proactive. And that's just for everybody listening tonight. Get out there and find people in your neighborhood that have a good enough heart that wants to run. I'll train them, but just send them my way. Mm -hmm. We need to do something about that. That was my little soapbox for the moment. So I don't know. I just don't know what to say to you because of the pain that you've all been through. I just, my heart hurts for you. I mean, I just wish I, we could start again and never ever happened. I have to say about these two right here, they are the most positive people <laughs> I know. Honest to God, you are. I mean, they are so upbeat every day about how they're handling this. And just before their house burned, they were just mm -hmm. such a positive, upbeat couple in our neighborhood, just always helpful. And, you know, and that's Ventura for you. But for we'll their back. positive attitude, you're coming back. <laughs> and we can't wait. We, are. we actually we looked at real estate outside of our neighborhood because it would be such an easy option. And part of the reason we chose to build on our old site, besides the fact that we had our engagement party there, I was in labor with both our children there, is the community on that street. Yeah. Mint and I thought, how can we leave Mike? He pretty much saved us. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they babysat it's our family. children. And we'd be so sad if you didn't come Thank back. You. We'd be missing a piece We'll as have a well. Christmas party, 20 invite something. Me. You're invited, <laughs> yes. And I think we're wrapping it up, but I want to thank all of you for opening your hearts and sharing what your experiences were and really means a lot to me on a personal level. So thank you for doing Thanks what for you're having doing. Us. Yeah. Thank you, thank you thank for having you. us. Fighting for what you deserve to have. Thank you. thank you. Thanks for watching us and join us again next week. And remember, get involved. Get off the couch and do something. Get off the couch. We'll see you next week. <laughs>